I'm sweating in this. It was so cold and now I'm just like sweating because I'm nervous. Talking to the camera is hard. Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Jamaica King and some of you might know me on the internet as Ra Ra. This is my first video in five years. It's been a minute. In this video, I wanted to take a look back at 2020 and share some of my highlights and lowlights with you, as well as touch on some of my 2021 goals. But first, before we get started, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, click on the notification bell so you won't miss out on my future videos. And if you really could help me out, I'd appreciate a thumbs up any like will really help with the algorithm, so I really, really, really appreciate your support. All you have to do is click that like button. Please, Kate, thanks. Thank you. All right, so let's dive in. We can all admit that this year sucked. It's probably one of the least exciting times of my life, but it could, could have been worse. So I think that it's important that we look back and appreciate all the great things that happened this year and the small wins and victories. The biggest win for me this year is I survived. You survived. We survived 2020 if you're watching this video right now. I am just so grateful I don't have COVID. Um, I've done a pretty good job of staying home. I've only left the house when I really needed to. I did see some family and friends and I did travel once, but I tried my best to be very, very safe. Going out in public, I was always sure to be socially distant, to always have a mask. And yeah, so yes, I survived COVID so far. The other big win for me this year is that I have a job. <laughs> if you've been following me for some time, you know that I've been working with the same company for over nine and a half years. Uh, I started immediately after college and I've been there since then. I'm already in my 30s and I've only really worked for one company for pretty much a decade. Something I've been struggling with myself is this feeling of wanting to do something new. But at the same time, my job was so comfortable and I have a really, really cool job and so many people would kill to have my job. And so I have this like this battle with myself. And earlier this year, I was actually making plans to leave my company and then the pandemic happened. And I was so grateful that my company was willing to keep me on. Then I realized that my priority for 2020 wasn't to go find the thing that lit me up inside or to go do something new. It was to be stable and have stability during times that are so uncertain. I was also really fortunate because the pandemic actually killed my job. I was a photo producer. And so a big part of my job was planning and executing photo shoots, traveling to events, and um, working with a crew of photographers on site at the event. Well, obviously there weren't very many events. A lot of our production went remote. I felt very lucky that my, my company kept me on even though I didn't really have a job um, and they were still paying me. But then a couple months later, they also rolled me over into a new position. So I got to learn and do new things. And I got to work on some really, really, really cool projects this year that I wouldn't have done if it wasn't for this pandemic. This year, I am so grateful to, to just have a job and to be alive. There were a lot of good things that happened, but there were also a lot of things that I actually never really talked about on social media. In fact, I went pretty silent on social media for a while. You know, I used to be consistent with my posting. I would post three to f at a, three times a week at a minimum, and I would try to post as often as possible, almost every day on my stories. And there were times where I just didn't really get on social media. Um, this year was heavy, there were a lot going on, and my anxiety was through the roof. Like, I was just feeling so anxious about everything. Everything, everything about like, not, I'm not really sure what I wanna do with my life, unsure if I was gonna have a job, unsure in my relationship because I was so anxious and it was like driving my boyfriend crazy. And there was just all these emotions that I've never felt bef 
for at that level. So I am the type of person who I feel strongly. So if I'm really happy, I'm super happy. And if I'm sad, I'm pretty damn sad. One of the things that I do to cope with these like extreme emotions is I keep myself, myself busy. So I'm just constantly doing things, juggling five things at a time. That is something that I did a lot over quarantine is because I was anxious, I was, I was doing so many things and then that led to burnout, which is not a good thing. I am starting to understand and learn more about myself. I recently got a therapist and it is the best investment I've done this year. Finding a therapist and really devoting to learning and growing and understanding myself and allowing myself to feel my emotions is one is another big win for me. So now let's talk about some of my 2020 goals. I usually write my goals on a notepad or notes on my phone. And every year I would adjust it a little bit um, to either do it again or uh, level it up for the following year. Let me go over my 2020 goals with you and then talk about it a little as I go. So let's start with financial. I set out to max my Roth IRA. It's something I've been doing for the last couple years since I paid off my debt. Um, and I was able to do that this year. I was able to save $6,000 um, into that account. My second financial goal was to hit a certain net worth. Every year I try to increase my net worth by um, a little bit. I set a very specific number so that it's more attainable and measurable. And by the end of the year, I try to achieve that number. For 2020, I actually overly exceeded that goal by over $100,000. And the reason I want to say is because two things. One, I was actively investing in the stock market this year more than normal. Usually I would just put my money in and just let it sit there. But this year I was able to like actively invest um, my account. So that helped. The last thing is just being stuck or being safe at home. I spent less money than normal. I spent a lot of my money on two things, food and travel. I rent my clothes. I don't really own a lot of clothes. I get a lot of free fitness gear, so I don't have to spend money there. But food and travel are the two things I just like spend all my money on. And this year, um, I did spend a lot of money on food, but I think that I spent way less money on travel and that's like a really, really big expense. So that was why I was able to hit my uh, financial net worth goal. Now, fitness goal. <laughs> every year I have a weight goal and every year I never ever reach it. And I'm okay with that. I just kind of have that number because it helps me, it, it motivates me to like, reach for something. Um, fitness has always been a part of my life since I started my journey back in 2014. It started out as a weight loss journey and now it's more of just something I really enjoy. It's my cup of coffee in the morning. It is something that like keeps me happy um, and elevates my serotonin level. So it's something that I try to do every day and I just do it for fun now. It's not something that, oh, I have to do this so I can reach a certain weight. It's just like, oh, what's a cool workout I'm really digging now. And so this weight goal really is just to keep me in check because I love food so, 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 so much. I My weight fluctuates like plus or minus 10 pounds. And so by having this weight goal, it just keeps me in check really. For 2020, my goal weight was 145. Um, I mean 140, originally it was 135, but I never got there. So I was like, okay, we're gonna make this realistic. So I did 145 and actually I'm 145 now, plus or minus like five pounds. Yay, yay, yay. The other goal, which I am terrible at and never actually accomplish is I put here, no alcohol except for special circumstances and Honestly, I feel like this is a goal that I need to take on with me to 2021 because I really enjoy drinking beer with meals. I would just buy cases of beer and put it in the fridge and then like one night I'll just like pop open a can. And I'm really bad. I also don't finish a can of beer. 
so I think like they need to create like a, a mini size beer for me because I'm just such a waster and which is another reason why I don't really want to drink beer like that I did drink a lot for holidays or birthdays I think this year I drank less at home leisurely you know like I used to have like a glass of wine every night to unwind or like beer with my meal and I think I did that a whole lot less this year but not as much as I wanted personal goals this was something i did i think the last two years um and it's something i continue i want to continue is i try to do one solo trip just me go somewhere all alone by myself this year i didn't really do that um i i mean i couldn't you know covid um i did go to hawaii for a week by myself and then I met my brother twice. I didn't really meet him because he was working. I think we had like one dinner and one day to hang out. And then a week later, my boyfriend and his sister came out um, and we hung out for another week there in Hawaii. So, uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I would call that a solo trip. It was, it felt kind of like a solo trip in the beginning, but not really. So let's just say no solo trip happened this year, okay? Okay. I try to go to a new country every year and yeah, nope, that didn't happen. I did go to Puerto Rico for New Year's last year, which was kind of, it was a new place for me, was not a new country because it's a territory of the US and I was there technically in 2019, so yeah, no. And then another personal goal of mine is every year I try to be more fashionable and dress better and it's something that I'm just constantly learning because it's so much effort for me. I love fashion and I appreciate it, but damn, it's so much work for me. It's it's just not easy for me. I've been trying to be as minimal as possible, but it's this balance of like, how do I be minimal and own less things, but also be fashionable and, and, and be on trend? So I just started renting my clothes. like actually got this from rent the runway but i loved it so much i purchased it but yeah i've been renting a lot of my clothes and trying my best to be more fashionable and it's probably something i'm going to continue to do in 2021 because while i don't really care well this is a lie i care about what people think about me i think that your appearance does affect how people interpret you or or make of you and so I think that it is important to dress up a little bit you know so that people can take you more seriously I used to wear workout clothes all the time because I would get it for free and my entire closet was full of workout clothes and I loved it I loved like it was so comfy it looked cool you know and every single time people will ask me oh are you going to the gym did you just work out and I'm just like I just started dressing up and the funny thing is when I started dressing up People are like, oh, where are you going? You, I've never seen you like this. All right, moving on. Professional goals. As I mentioned earlier, this year I was trying to leave my day job to, honestly, I had no other job lined up. I just wanted to kind of do me for a year and see where that would take me, but that didn't happen. And I'm actually really glad that it didn't happen because I now realize that I can do both. Why can't I do both? Why can't I work really hard at my day job and then spend my weekends or my evenings or my early mornings trying to figure out what I want to do? And until I can find that next move or something that's like kind of steering me in that way, then maybe that will be the time where I could leave uh, my day job. But Honestly, it's really, really hard to leave my day job because I just, I work with really great people and I do some really cool shit at work. And that's just something that like, I choose to be there. You know, it's not that like I hate my job. Like it's not perfect. There are days where I hate it. Why would I give up something because I've been there for so long? I always told myself that I will continue working at my job for as long as I keep learning. And there was a point earlier this year where I felt like it was stagnant or there's no more room for growth. And with COVID and my new position switching, I was given an opportunity to learn and grow a whole lot more in new ways that I wanted. Um, so that's why I'm here. I'm still here. So those were my 2020 goals. And usually 
I, I take those goals and I recycle them for next year. I still want to travel solo. I still want to go to a new country if I can. I just want to slow down and focus more. Instead of doing all the things, doing 10 things, I just want to work on one or two things and really work hard at those two things. One of those things is this channel. I would appreciate so much if you would subscribe to this channel, so show your support, give this video a like, and I'm so excited to go on this new journey with you. I'm hoping that I can level up my content creation and also just learn a lot more about life and myself and to learn about you. Thank you again for watching this video. Please give it a like and I will see you in my next video.